Hey guys, and welcome to another installment of my Halloween series. So today we're going to be turning ourselves into a jack-o'-lantern. So we're gonna get started with this look by pulling my hair back and gluing down my brows. Please ignore the flakes in my hair, I will wash my hair tomorrow. So all you're gonna do is take a child's glue stick and completely rub that over your brows. And then you wanna take a spoolie or a flat edge of some kind and brush the glue completely through your hairs. And then you wanna take a blow dryer on your coolest setting to help the glue dry a little bit faster. Now, depending on the thickness of your brows, you may have to do up to five layers of this. I did three layers, and honestly, I felt like I could have done one more to get a perfect lay on my brows, but for what we're doing today, it was just fine. Once all of your layers are dry and you have a nice smooth base, you wanna set the glue with some powder so it doesn't move. Now for this step, I'm going to break into my face paint that I'm gonna be using today because when you cover your brows, you kind of want to color correct. And since I don't color correct in my everyday life, I don't really have a good orange color corrector. So I'm going to be using the face paint to serve as my color corrector. Once that is in place, I'm going to take my favorite foundation from Too Faced and put some foundation over both of my brows, again, setting that down with some powder. And now we are browless. So for this look, I wanted the colors to pop a little bit more. So I felt like I needed to give myself a good white base to start with. So I'm going into that same palette I used as my color corrector for this episode. And I'm gonna use the white shade in that palette to completely cover my face. And since we're gonna be using bright colors like oranges and yellows to create this jack-o'-lantern, I wanted the colors to really stand out against my skin. Thus, I gave myself a little bit of an easier base to start with. And then I'm just gonna take a big sponge to blend that out and make sure it's nice and smooth. Now I'm going to take a nice tiny brush and we're gonna be using the same face paint palette that I showed you earlier. And we're gonna start drawing in our eyes for our jack-o'-lantern here. So I'm going with your typical jack-o'-lantern with triangle eyes and a big jagged mouth. So I'm gonna start that process by creating the triangles around my eyes. And I just used my eyes as the guide for creating the triangle. So I just followed the inside and outside of my eyes in order to determine where the triangle should naturally finish. Once I got the shape in and I liked the way it looked, I took that same black and I began, and I began filling in the triangle we just drew. Now with this paint, it doesn't have a strong smell or anything, so it's perfectly safe to put close to your eye, but you're gonna see a little bit of a gap between the paint and my waterline, and that is purposeful. I didn't want to risk the paint getting in my eye and causing any issues, so I just decided to get really close to my eyes and then I used a traditional black eyeliner to fill in that gap so that it's nice and seamless. And here are our eyes. Now that the eyes are in place, we're gonna go ahead and start putting in the mouth. Now when I did this mouth, I didn't really look at a photo or anything. I just kind of imagined it based on jack-o'-lanterns I had created when I was growing up and in my more recent years as an adult and just wanted to create something really big and jagged and kind of cool looking. So I started by just painting in a rough shape that I thought was gonna look cool and then I just filled that in with that same black face paint. And as you can see here, it's not perfect and we'll definitely be sure to clean it up at the end to give us some nice sharp edges. But for now, this was the shape that I was gonna start with. And once I was satisfied with the shape I created, I just went ahead and painted that in completely. 
and I'm going through and kind of cleaning up some of those rougher looking edges and I'll be sure to hit them with a nice fine brush at the end once our base makeup is finished. And here is our mouth all painted in and it looks so cool guys. We're starting to look like a jack-o-lantern. So now I'm going to go into my Lunar Beauty Prism palette as I realized today it's the only palette I own that has a black in it which I need to fix. But I'm going to use that black shade of eyeshadow to kind of set the paint in place and kind of just fill in those areas like I told you before where I didn't want to get super close to my eyes. And now that that's all set in place, we're going to go ahead and get started on the actual creating of the jack-o'-lantern's face. So I started here by drawing a straight line through the center of my face and then adding two lines to the left and right side of my face. I wanted to keep this look simple and not have a bunch of bumps. So in order to do that, I kept it down to these four sections. So I'm going to start by blending out that dark line and then adding some orange paint and blending those colors together because I wanted to create this illusion that my face was rounded and popping out in places like a normal jack-o'-lantern would be. So I kept my darker colors on the edges and then kept my oranges and my lighter colors in the center of each section. So now that the brown is all kind of blended out, I went in with an orange and I started building up that color next to the brown so that they could create a nice smooth gradient. And I made sure to trace nice clean lines around the edges of my eyes and my mouth. And again, I'm going to go in with a sponge to help blend those colors together so they don't have any brush strokes. Next, I'm going to take this bright yellow and mix it with the orange to create the center of the brightest part of the pumpkin. Again, creating that illusion that the lightest part is closer to you and the darkest part is further away from you. And I just kept that in the center and blended it around with the orange. I did that on my forehead in the center of my cheek and then here you see me just going ahead and doing the same thing on my chin. And now that I've put in those colors on the right side of my face, we're going to do the left side of my face the exact same way. So I made sure to speed this part up for you guys since you already know how it's going to turn out. So now we're getting back into creating definition and kind of hard bumps like you would on a normal pumpkin. So I'm going to go in with this purple bruise tone and we're going to use that to create a nice hard line right through the center of my head. And then we're going to add some darker colors to create that curving effect. And then you just want to reinforce where you put that color by adding a nice hard line right in the middle because it helps with the illusion that there is a curve on a flat surface. I use that same technique to define the edges of the left and right side of my face. And with these final sections of my face, we just want to treat them the exact same way. So applying our nice orange base, adding a little bit of yellow and blending it out, and then using our bruised purple tone to add some definition and shape into the areas that we've colored in. So once I completed the majority of the face, I actually decided to add a nose to myself as I feel like it was just missing. I went ahead and set my face with some setting powder. It's not really necessary, but it made me feel nice and cool, so I did it. And here I'm just adding some final touches to clean up all these edges and make sure they are nice and sharp. Once the face is basically finished, I'm going to go ahead and do my hair. So this is the first time I'm showcasing my natural hair for a look and I wanted my hair to be big and I wanted my hair to be fluffy. So I'm not really worried about stretching my hair and disrupting the curls that I currently have. 
And here is the final look, everyone. This was so fun to do. I find this look extremely simple, but also extremely cool. And I wanted to have something in this series that just focused on painting of the face. So you didn't need a bunch of crazy products or anything like that. This is great for yourself. This is great for your children. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this video because I had so much fun painting up my face like this. If you are enjoying this series so far, please be sure to leave a like on this video. Be sure to comment down below anything you would like to comment down below. And if you guys have a look that you really want me to do before this series is over, please let me know and I will try to make it happen. Again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel on your way out. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye everyone.